For most of my adult life, I traveled a safe path. I remember in vivid detail the moment I began my journey. August 1983, the hot, muggy summer of David Bowie's Modern Love and Synchronicity by the Police. A few months after I graduated college, I stood on the corner of 7th Avenue and Bleecker Street in New York City wearing pastel balloon trousers, a hot pink v-neck t-shirt, and bright white Capizio Oxfords. I lingered at the intersection, peering deep into my future, and contemplated the choice between the secure and the uncertain, between the creative and the logical, between the known and the unknown. I dreamed of being a successful artist, but in as much as I knew what I wanted, I felt compelled to consider what was reasonable in order to ensure my economic security. Even though I wanted what my best friend once referred to as the whole wide world, I thought it was prudent to compromise. I told myself it was more sensible to aspire for success that was realistically attainable, perhaps even failure proof. It never once occurred to me that I could succeed at what I dreamed of. As I look back on this decision nearly 30 years later, I try to soothe myself with this rationale. I grew up in an atmosphere of emotional and financial disarray, so my impulse as a young woman was to be tenaciously self-sufficient. As a result, I've lived within a fairly fixed set of possibilities. I'm not an accomplished artist. I'm a brand consultant. I don't work alone painting canvases and sculpting clay in a cold and quiet studio. I work in a bustling New York City office building and create logos for fast food restaurants and packaging for mass market soft drinks, salty snacks, and over-the-counter pharmaceuticals. I am not unhappy with what has transpired in the years leading up to today. Most days, I consider myself incredibly lucky that I have a fun, steady job and a good paycheck. But I know deep in my heart that I settled. I chose security and stability over artistic and emotional freedom. And I can't help but wonder what my life would be like if I had made different decisions back on that balmy night in the West Village. I'll never know. But I've come to a realization over the years. I am not the only person who has made this choice, not by a long shot. I discovered these common self-imposed restrictions are rather insidious, though they start out simple enough. We begin by worrying that we aren't good enough, that we're not smart enough or talented enough to get what we want, and then we voluntarily live in this paralyzing mental framework rather than confront our own role in this self-fulfilling paralysis. Just the possibility of failing turns into something self-fulfilling. We begin to believe that these personal restrictions are in fact fixed limitations of the world. We go on to live our lives, all the while wondering what we can change and how we can change it, and we calculate and recalculate when we will be ready to do the things we really want to do. And we dream. If only, if only, one day, someday, but every once in a while, often when we least expect it, we encounter someone more courageous, someone who chose to strive for that which seemed to us unrealistically attainable, even elusive. And we marvel, we swoon, we gape. Often we are in awe. I think we look at these people as lucky, when in fact luck has nothing to do with it. 
It is really about the strength of their imagination. It is about how they constructed the possibilities for their life. In short, unlike me, they didn't determine what was impossible before it was possible. John Maida once explained, the computer will do anything within its abilities, but it will do absolutely nothing unless commanded to do so. I think that people are the same. We like to operate within our abilities, but whereas the computer has a fixed code, our abilities are limited only by our perceptions. Three decades since determining my code, and after two and a half decades of walking one path, I've begun to rewrite the possibilities of what comes next. So far, the results have surprised me. Sometimes they scare me. Sometimes they baffle me. Most times, I'm just glad that I'm feeling something real. But there hasn't been one minute during this time that I haven't wished I started sooner. I really don't know what I was waiting for. The grand scheme of a life, maybe, just maybe, is not about knowing or not knowing, choosing or not choosing. Perhaps what is truly known can't be described or articulated by creativity or logic, science or art. Perhaps it can be expressed by the most authentic and meaningful combination of the two, poetry. As Robert Frost once wrote, a poem begins as a lump in the throat, a sense of wrong, a homesickness, a lovesickness. It is never a thought to begin with. I recommend the following course of action for those like you who are just starting out or who, like me, may be reconfiguring midway through. Heed the words of Robert Frost. Start with a big, fat lump in your throat. Start with a profound sense of wrong, a deep homeless homesickness, or a crazy lovesickness, and run with it. If you imagine less, Less will be what you undoubtedly deserve. Do what you love, and don't stop until you get what you love. Work as hard as you can, imagine immensities, don't compromise, and don't waste time. In order to strive for a remarkable life, you have to decide that you want one. Start now, not 20 years from now, not 30 years from now, not two weeks from now. Now, congratulations on this important day.